Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be doing a very simplified rose. When I was deciding what I was going to be doing for you today I had a quick look on Pixabay and for those of you that are regular to my channel you know I use this quite a lot for reference photos because they are license free. Now the way that I usually use it is that I put something into the search engine so I would put rose in the search engine and see what popped up but the way I looked at it this morning was just to scroll through the favourites and the ones that they suggested which were all sorts of different pictures and see what caught my eye and the thing that caught my eye really about this picture was how simplified it is and how easy it is to do because so many people worry about painting and drawing roses when they're open um, and they're full there's an awful lot of petals there and lots of curls and twirls and things to get in but with this being quite tight in bud it's very simple and I thought it would be a good little drawing exercise so I will link this photograph in the description below so you can go along and find that for yourself there and then you can work from your monitor or print it off now you may like to I'm going to do it as it is I think but you may like to alter it around you can put it uh, vertically as if the rose was in a vase or something and you could even carry on and build up a painting and put a vase or something on there or make it look as if it's in a garden but I'm just going to do the rose itself I'm not going to worry about any background and we're just going to use it as a drawing exercise so first things first is we need to look at the measurements here so if you get your pencil and you see how long the rose is and then see how long that compares to the stem and actually the bud there from the very tip to there is very similar comes all the way up to there and then you've just got that little tiny bit so you would think there was a lot more stem on there than there is bud but actually it's mostly flower so if we look at that measurement and then we can transfer that to our picture so what you're doing is you're putting the edge of your pencil right at the tip of the rose you're marking where the end of that flower comes to and then we're going to transfer that to our paper so put a tiny mark there look at where your finger is there and put another mark there so we've got that measurement of this length and then the stem can just go off we don't need to worry about the stem just now now we need to look at the width and so we look at the widest part so it's widest here where it's bulging out again put the tip of your pencil I'm hoping you can see that the tip of your pencil there mark it with your fingers at the other edge so you've got that measurement put a line there and another line there so that's all you need to begin with is those four marks so that we know we've got the size of that now if we look at the stem we could put it in now so that's the length of the stem so it's going to there and we'll pop that in and you'll see it tapers away as it goes down mostly not because the stem itself is taper away, tapering away can you see how it's much thinner here than it is here that's not because the stem itself is thinner there it's because it's further away from us so it appears smaller okay so now we can look at where the leaves are so again get your pencil hold it up to the image I'll do it this way so we're always using the tip put the tip at the bottom of the flower and look at where the leaves come off and again we can measure that to there and now we're going to look at how wide the leaf itself is how long the leaf itself is so the leaf comes to there and on the other side it's slightly shorter and it comes to there so this is a very quick and easy way of getting all your measurements in to begin with I'm not going to worry too much about that little one let's just see how far down sets off about here somewhere again it looks smaller because it's further away I think this is this photograph's taken on quite an angle this leaf here or casing of the bud sorry I'm hoping you can still see that this casing here we can worry about that later because that's just one fine line there and this again all these little bits they can all be popped in later on just get those basic measurements so I'll pop the photograph out of the way and I'll now start and fill in this shape so from here if we look it goes out in a nice round shape so when you're doing a round shape like that don't try and do one long continuous line make it nice and loose keep your wrist free 
and do a few little lines to get that nice shape in. And again, we're going down and we've got a sort of inward curve. I tend to over exaggerate curves, so don't put in the comments that I've gone too far with that because it's something that I like drawing, so I do tend to over exaggerate them. But you've got that nice sort of S shape there, so you're going out, in, and out again. And we'll carry on and do that petal rather than go over to the other side of the flower. I know you can't see the edge of the petal because it's hidden by the other one, but if you get that shape in, that's going to help with everything else. So again, a nice sweep down. Now if we look at the other petal, look at how straight that line is. And you wouldn't think of drawing a straight line across there, but it is. It goes out a little bit here and in. And if we look at it, it lines up with this other petal. So we need that line there and this shape here. So come across and keep this in mind. going out to that mark and slightly up and it's finishing there and then it's going over this one slightly and it's a little bit kinked here it goes up and down when you're doing these little kinks and things just bear in mind that the person that's going to be looking at your picture later isn't going to have this photograph in front of them and they're not going to know that you haven't got that exactly right if your kinks just in the wrong place now because this one is above this one, we can just rub that line out. It was easier to leave it there as we were drawing that top leaf, top petal to get the sweep of the curve in so that we know that this line joins up to this line. But we can now rub that out. And the easiest thing now is to get this in um, so it comes across to the stalk. This is an underneath petal and across here. And I'm looking now and thinking that doesn't look very wide. This space here so this is where your measuring comes in when you're checking measurements. It should be that wide and it isn't. And I'm thinking that's because this needs to come much more this way. And it can ju could just be something very small where we've gone too far out with a curve that alters that. And also I think this one going out too far that way so we just need to open that little bit up a bit to make that wider so alter as you go on along and measure as you go along so here we're going out and down it's quite a simple shape and then this one here it's sort of halfway between there and there, isn't it? So if we look to halfway and we're going to more or less in line with our measurement there and then down and it meets where it's that corner there. So, you know, you'll have this in front of you to be having a look at. But it's all quite simple shapes. Again, this last one here, we've got a little bit of a kink there. We can rub that marker out there. And from here, this wants to be a bit rounder, so correct as you go along. Don't have anything set in stone. If it's wrong, erase it and carry on. And then down here, I don't know if you can see that there's a petal actually peeping out. So we're just seeing the underside of a petal there and we're seeing one here as well. You could have left those little bits out but it just gives us that feeling that we can see more of that. This somehow isn't quite right, it needs to be coming out more from there and more of a sweeping curve. And this curves around, that's all one line really. So take your time get these pencil lines in the right place before we move on to doing any ink or anything. You could just do it in pencil if you wanted to. Still feel that needs to be a bit fatter there. 
and you can see one going away, a little petal, and the other one is coming over the top of that, and that's actually quite dried and withered. So you've got a line coming across here, and then you've got another withery leaf going down here. So with the ones that are coming around the side here, the little casings, just look at where they finish again. Look at where it is in relation to that and in relation to down here. So if we go up, it's in line with this and see where it stops. And again, if we look at this one, it's sort of in line with here somewhere. And it needs that bit of a kink as well to give it a bit of life. We can actually see both the inside and the outside of that leaf. Now I'm going to carry on now and do the same thing, measure these leaves and get all that drawn in and then I'll come back in a moment and start doing it with some pen. Now because we know that we measured that to begin with, we can be quite confident in our measurements with the overall shape of the rose, perhaps not with everything within that, with the petals because I didn't actually measure those, I did it by eye. If you wanted to, you could measure every little thing with your pencil in the way that I showed you. But because we're quite confident that we've got the measurements right, now with the pen we can just concentrate on getting the detail in. So if we can get some of these fine lines in, we can look at where the, the way the leaves curl and we can see the inside of that leaf. We can see how it's got a little curl on the end where that leaf is very dry. Things like this dry one here has got quite an intricate shape. So we can really concentrate on getting those in without having to worry about keeping rechecking the overall initial drawing. And then when we come back, we can take away all those pencil lines and we'll end up with a really nice ink drawing that's nice and clear and that has the right proportions. So I'm not going to talk all the time I'm doing this, I'm just going to use the one pen throughout. So the pen that I'm using is a pigment liner and it's size 0.5 so of course that is light fast and waterproof as normal um, because if we did want to put some paint over the top, I'm not sure whether I'm going to yet or not, I may do at the end, um, we do want need that pen to be waterproof. So I find a size 0.5 is quite nice, it's not so fine that you can't see it but it's fine enough for something as delicate as a flower. So I will go ahead now and draw this in the ink and I'll come back and chat with you a little bit later on to see how we've got on with that.
Okay, now after giving that a couple of minutes to dry to make sure that you're not going to spoil your ink drawing there, you can go ahead and carefully erase those pencil lines. Now I should have said earlier, the pad that I'm using today is actually a mixed media pad. Um, I like drawing on this because it's a nice smooth paper and the thing is that you, if you then do decide you want to put some colour on, you've got lots of options of what you can do, whether you want to use some ink tents or some watercolour, whatever media you want to use on top to add some colour. If you use this mix, a mixed media paper, it gives you that option to do that. But it's really nice to draw on because it's nice and smooth. You've not got too much texture in the paper where your pen's going to be bouncing around. So you can see how we've got much more character in this flower now by adding those little marks in the leaves where we've got those little sharp edges. So when you're first doing your measurement and you're first doing your pencil drawing, just do that basic shape and then get all this detail in with your pen. Very, be very gentle with your eraser, you don't want to spoil the paper if you are going to be putting some paint on there. So although I know we have done roses before, I do hope you found that little drawing exercise useful. Go ahead and have a look down below in the description for that reference photograph because, it's, because it is really an easy one to practice with. And as I said earlier, you could do it in any direction you wanted. You can, you know, you can move your page around and have it as an upright rose. You could add to it. You could add a garden behind it. Or you could make it look as if it was in an arrangement indoors with a vase. You'll just see how you get on with that very basic shape. I mean, the most complicated bit really is getting these end bit right here. And if you wanted now, you've got that nice solid drawing, you could spend a lot of time looking at all the different tones in the flower itself because we've actually got a really lovely highlight that goes right away across the top of the flower and across the top of the stem. So if you did come to paint it, that's something you want to bear in mind is, is look at the tones, look at the colours, look at the shadows under here and the shadows here on the leaf. It's a really nice clear photograph to work from if you wanted to get all that extra detail in and spend a long time painting it. I think what I'm going to do is just put a very simple splash of colour on the top and keep it as quite an illustrative drawing. So I'll go ahead now and put a little bit of colour on this for you and I'll pop some music on whilst I do that. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll be back again with you soon with another tutorial or demonstration. Thanks for watching and bye for now.